Hey class, it's Bill Berry here with the week 9 demo. We're continuing our topics from last week. And last week we talked about inheritance. We got a good way through the topic of inheritance and also talked about overrides. We are continuing our object-oriented programming lessons though. So this week we're picking up with polymorphism and then talking about abstracts, including classes and methods. But let's go reacquaint ourselves with where we were, where we ended last week. We <clears throat> had a person class and we had two extensions of that, two subclasses called student and teacher. And we noticed that when we declared a student as ex an extended class from person, we could uh, override the methods there and we got inherited methods from the parent, but we could add some new methods and we could override methods to change the behavior for that class. We also saw that as we, when we declared uh, variables of that type, we saw the behavior that we expected. We uh, then looked specifically into overrides. So we overrode a couple of different methods. One was we had a two string method, but we said, look, we really want students to have a different kind of two string. So we talked a little bit about their GPA, for instance, and how many courses they'd completed. We also would do the same thing in teacher where we might say how many courses they're teaching this particular term. So two string was made specific to those classes we, via an override. We also overrode the valid ID method. So we said a person, we really didn't know how to validate IDs because the rules were different for students and teachers. So we implemented a new valid ID and override in the student class, which did the specific stuff that needed to be done there to validate IDs. They needed to be nine digits long. They needed to be uh, all numeric digits, etc. So we got that far and that was great, but we left ourselves with a couple of questions. So one of the things that I asked and didn't answer was, can I refer to a student via a person reference, right? We said a student is a person, so can't I refer to a student as a person? And then if so, what behaviors do I get? So we'll answer that question and then we have several follow-up questions that we'll come back to, but let's go answer that one first. So let's look at our main code and you'll notice that we declared a person reference called test person and we assigned that to a newly created student so it's a student object but it's a person reference and then I called the set ID method now this is interesting because this should only succeed if the thing is being treated as a student even though it's being used as a person reference we would expect and we hope that it's treated as a student and it would give our validation rules pertinent to students and not teachers otherwise this is going to fail so let's go and do a print line on this so that we prove whether two string is working and we also will prove whether set ID is working as expected. So let's jump out and look at that real quick. We'll run that and then we'll look at the output that we get. And in fact, here's the output for this. Even though it's a test person reference, <clears throat> we're getting it treated as a student. So we're getting the student valid ID is working and the student to string is working. So this is a great example of polymorphism. Polymorphism, many forms, right? Polymorphs. There are many forms of validation, valid IDs that are floating around here. And there are many types of two strings that are floating around here. Uh, so polymorphism means, look, you're going to get the right type based on the type of the object, regardless of how you refer to that, regardless of what kind of reference. However far you go up the chain, you can still use a reference to that type, but you're going to get those overridden behaviors via polymorphism. That's what that means. So that answers our first question, and that's kind of interesting stuff, but it's cool stuff. It's a student treated as a student, right? So that's what we get there, which is pretty good. Now, that answered one question, but now let's go and try something slightly different. Can I do this? Can I, through a person reference, try to call a method that is specific to a student? Well, the answer to that is no. When you have a person reference, a person class doesn't know about these other things. Yes, overrides are in place, so overrides magically do the right thing. But in terms of calling methods that are specific to the subclass, you cannot do this here, right? Because a person reference doesn't know about those methods. Now, you could say, wow, could I do something to fix that? Well, yeah, we could do something like this. Instead of a test person, right, could we not cast that to a student? right and then of course I'm gonna to do that cast I have to come and do this kind of thing right oops open paren and then close paren so I cast test person to a student 
reference and then can I call record course, course completion well yeah that works fine that compiles fine and that'll work but notice now we're treating a person as a student and that kind of logic is not very sound it works in this case because it happened to be that Chrissy is in fact a student but if you try to do this on a teacher you're going to get an exception, right? This is going to blow up and it's going to say, hey, this you can't cast a teacher as a student because it ain't so. Now, the underlying thing here is you probably shouldn't be trying to do this anyway. You shouldn't be trying to do student-y things with a person-y kind of reference. So it's an interesting topic, but it's one that we will sort of leave out and say it's an interesting thing, but it's not something we would normally want to do. So we will basically leave, our, leave ourselves a note that says can't do this. So we now have a couple of students and a teacher created and we've seen how depend even on depending on what kind of reference we have irregardless of that you have a uh, the thing will be treated correctly you get the correct overrides and they'll be treated as the proper object type which is very cool so that answers the first questions and the, qu the main question that we left when we uh, departed the video last time now the next question we have is uh, can I have a single array I want an array that includes all kinds of people from this uh, from this cl these classes and what happens can I put them all in array and what behaviors do I get etc so let's go try that just to prove to ourselves that indeed uh, we can act on all of these things because remember a student is a person and a teacher is a person so can't I create a uh, you know college people array and set it to a new person array with let's say five people in it Right. And then I've created all of these. I have a test student, a test teacher, and a test person. Can I come down here and say uh, college people sub zero? And now I want to point that at test student. Right. Now remember, these are references. Test student is a reference to a student. So I'm going to stuff that in to an array which points at persons, not students. Is that legal? Well, we'll find out in a minute. Right, and then let's take this one and point it to the test teacher. And last but not least, let's point the next one at the test person. Right. So now I have an array of all three, all pointing at slightly different types. What happens if I say for uh, int person index equals zero, less than three and then person index plus plus what if I cycle through all of these guys and I just use the two string method by saying system dot out dot print len, and I'm going to print uh, college people and then I'm going to index by person index right so what do we expect think about it for a second what do we hope happens here what do we believe based on polymorphism based on what we've learned what do you expect to have here now let me go to the output window and clear what we have here so that we are completely sure that we are getting uh, seeing only what we should so let's take a look at what happens when we run this guy okay now let's go look at our output window all right so we have the student has completed two, cur uh, two courses, great. Uh, the teacher is teaching this course, and then we have, uh, we have a lot of stuff going on. But basically, the people were treated properly as students and were treated properly as teachers. So they were treated uh, appropriately for each according to their type. Now we want to uh, look at main, make sure we didn't do anything bad. We're pointing to test student, test teacher, uh, test person, right? So everything everything seems to be happening correctly. We're pointing to the right people. Now let me make sure I didn't make any mistakes. Everything looks good there. Yes, test person. Okay. So everything looks like it was happening uh, correctly and I've gone through my index. Everything seemed to be great. So as expected, polymorphism saved the day. It lets me treat everybody as a person, but yet we still get the overrides that we think are appropriate and that we would expect to see here. So that's exceedingly cool, right? That's good stuff. So uh, that answers our question about 
uh, having a single array that walks through all of these even though they are different subtypes that works. You can still treat them as a person and this is true going up the chain. Remember no matter how many levels you have you have is a relationships you can go all the way to the top, top and you can have an array that holds anything that comes from the bottom. So that is exceedingly good stuff. Now there are a couple more things that we want to take up. There's several more questions uh, that take us a little deeper uh, and so we will take those up but since we're hitting about the 10 minute mark let's stop here and then we will pick up and answer these questions in the next video. Thanks for watching.